Today was a pretty crazy day on the stock market with AMD jumping almost 16.5% and Intel falling by almost the exact same margin, all on the news that Intel's 7 nanometer process is going to be delayed another six months. And although Intel's overall earnings report was pretty solid, uh, this news really sunk their stock today. And AMD really benefited from this news as they have already transitioned to a seven nanometer process and are refining it uh, with each release of their next generation with Ryzen 3000, very, very solid chips. Then they released their 3000 XT series chips, which just overall improved on the seven nanometer process. And now with 4000 series chips on their way, we should see even more refinement in that seven nanometer process being produced by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, which also saw an 11% increase today due to their connection with AMD. And although there was a big jump for AMD and a sharp drop off for Intel, overall at a $50 stock price for Intel and an $80 price for AMD, their market caps still sit at around $210 billion for Intel and 80 billion for AMD. And there's just still that wide discrepancy between the two companies and Intel's enterprise customers have really gotten it to that level of success where AMD is really just starting to break into the market with their newest generation of chips with their Epic processors for enterprise customers and then their Ryzen 3000 and soon to come Ryzen 4000 for both uh, system integrators as well as just overall PC enthusiasts. And AMD had already jumped the last few days with their release of 4000 series Pro CPUs for OEM customers. And the 4000 series is pretty much just the 3000 series with integrated Radeon graphics. So with like a 4700G Pro processor, that is pretty much just a 3700 with integrated graphics, but some really, really awesome news when it comes to OEM chips uh, that we will be seeing much better integrated graphics from AMD, where we have already seen that from Intel. And even though these 4000 series APUs are based on the Zen 2 architecture that the Ryzen 3000 series chips were based on as well, there's still some thought that the Ryzen 4000 series desktop series processors will feature the next generation of Zen 2 Plus architecture or Zen 3 architecture, whatever they decide to call it, um, which should see crazy increases in performance to what we've already seen from Ryzen 3000 over the last generation of chips. But with the expected release of Ryzen 4000 desktop chips later this year, we should get some firm numbers soon uh, so we can actually see exactly what those performance increases look like, whether it's you know increases to IPC and instructions per clock or whether it's increases to core clock speed. We don't really know quite yet, but we should know later this year. And for Intel, the news today that Intel's seven nanometer process is going to be delayed another six months, most likely pushing that release back to 2022. And with 10 nanometers still almost a year away, we're sort of stuck in this place where we sort of, we know we're gonna get really, really good Intel chips in the near future. But when it comes to the present state of Intel chips, you know, that 14 nanometer uh, plus 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 process that Intel is on, uh, they're still going to see a lot of demand from enterprise customers who really, really want that reliability that AMD just sort of hasn't proven themselves out long enough where they can trust, you know, AMD Epic processors uh, in large scale. And then for PC gamers, enthusiasts, they're still shooting for, you know, those super high core clock speeds that you can really only get with Intel chips, especially with like the newest i9 10900K or the 9900K. You really only see those core clock performance with Intel, whereas with AMD, you're seeing you know a nice increase in core count. Clocks are still relatively good. IPC is pretty amazing. So overall, they sort of even out. But for gaming, Intel still leads the way. But with the news of Intel's delay to both their 10 nanometer and seven nanometer processes, who knows what AMD is going to do? Do they play the slow card and just sort of stick with the Zen 2 architecture that they currently have, make some small improvements to the process, and release 4000 series, knowing that Intel sort of just doesn't have the capability to put out a product that is good enough to uh, compete with their current series of processors, or do they go and just completely try to bury Intel with you know the final knockout and just release you know that next generation, that Zen 3 architecture to the 4000 series chips, giving us hopefully higher core clocks as well as you know that same high core count maybe a little bit better IPC, just a nice overall improvement to the processors that sort of 
make you think, you know, how am I going to buy Intel when the technology is lacking, the process is lacking, and AMD delivers just a better overall product that allows you both to game and sort of tackle anything in your workload due to those higher core counts. Now the ball is really in the hands of AMD with the release of these new 4000 series APUs for OEM customers. You know, we see that they're sort of taking a little bit of a step back while still delivering a super high quality processor with integrated graphics to the end customer. You know, really OEMs are still going for Intel based processors. When it comes to laptops, they're sort of starting to make the transition. Uh, and now with you know Ryzen 3000, they've also made that transition as well. But when it comes to enterprise customers, enterprise products, you know the small form factor PCs, um, things that you know companies are using on a daily basis, really those are still Intel based uh, computers. So with the release of this 4000 series APU, AMD might be able to take a little bit of the market share away from Intel in that respect. What's really interesting to me is what AMD will do in the, the PC enthusiast DIY space. Will they take the ball and just run with it, go full Zen 3, Zen 2 plus architecture, take their chips to the next level? Or do they do a similar thing to the 4000 series Pro APUs where they stick with Zen 2 and they just sort of make small refinements to their chips, uh, knowing that Intel is still pretty far behind when it comes to their 10 nanometer and 7 nanometer process? Only time will tell, we'll hopefully see at the end of this year. And I don't wanna seem like an AMD fanboy, I got enough slack for that in the last video I made about Intel 10 gen, just saying, you know, maybe hold off until AMD 4000 series Ryzen chips come out or the Intel 10 nanometer process is sort of finalized and they come out with desktop series chips. But, you know, I'm still rocking an 8700K. However, if AMD comes out with Ryzen 4000 and it sort of just blows the spec sheet out of the water compared to Ryzen 3000 or 10th gen Intel, you sort of can't really look away from AMD. You sort of don't really have a choice with how outdated the Intel 14 nanometer process is. But only time will tell. We'll have to just wait and see what AMD does, what Intel sort of next steps are when it comes to 10 nanometer and 7 nanometer. But for right now, AMD sort of went in the game when it comes to DIY PC enthusiast builds. Uh, and they're slowly starting to gain traction with OEMs as well as enterprise customers which is making for some great competition, you know, in the semiconductor CPU space, prices are starting to come down on Ryzen 3000, Intel chips as well. So, you know, it's only good for the end consumer, which is awesome. So if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we're super close to 1000 subscribers. If you have any questions, any comments about what I talked about in this video or any other videos, be sure to leave those in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.